Hi everybody, Jonathan here with another Twin Motion 2022.2 preview video. Now I couldn't resist having a play today. I wanted to do some new tutorials for you. It's been a while since I've done a tutorial. I really hope you've seen my new features uh, video that got released yesterday. If not, check that one out. But this focus is on going to be on a new interiors tutorial for you. And what we're going to do is just create something really cool in 15 minutes. That's it. Very straightforward, just to show you how amazing Twin Motion is. Um, so I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. See you, bye. So what we're going to do to begin with is just import our file. Now you can see it's a Cinema 4D file we're going to work with. And as usual, we're going to keep the hierarchy and just let that data read in. Um, you can use the scene material, okay, in this circumstance. What we're going to do up is pop up to the uh, scene graph and click F to fit to the scene. And let's move through in the scene and navigate through to the interior space. I really like the new speeds that Twinmotion 2022 preview have introduced uh, with speeds 1 to 6. Now remember that's a great improvement over the original three speeds that we had before, particularly when you are working on uh, interiors or close-up scenes for things like products. Okay, so here's the basic scene. Um, what we're going to do is go and create an image file just to kind of frame up this particular view. And right away, I'm just going to go to Format, and I often render at 4K Ultra HD. Sometimes we'll change that to a custom uh, resolution. But right away, I'm just going to click the Path Tracing button, and you can see right at the box what amazing quality rendering we're now getting from Twinmotion 2022. Now, if you go into your Preferences, um, you can see that I'm using DirectX 12 at the moment, if your graphics card is capable. I'm also going to go to my low preset for path tracing and just make that really, really low settings with just four samples and three uh, bounces. For my medium, let's up that a little bit maybe and let's just kind of up the uh, bounces on the preset for the high. Now this is a really good tip because it means that you can render very rapidly in uh, low settings or perhaps medium settings when you're working and then you can kind of crank up to the high settings as you need to. But even in low settings, as you can see, I can navigate around more or less in real time. And as soon as I release, it will kind of re-render. Now, don't forget, you can click R to turn the path tracing on and off as well. Okay, right, let's get on with some materials on the scene. You can see I'm just kind of dragging and dropping some leather from the library. That looks really cool already. Um, so the Cinema 4D scene did come through with a few textures, but I can see there is quite a few missing as well. Uh, so I'm just gonna go through and drag on a nice sort of fabric here. I'm gonna scale that down nice and easily with the slider. So I think we need to um, maybe get rid of this laptop here. Didn't come through with any textures. So I'm just going to scroll up to the high level, as you can see, and delete that laptop. I'm going to go through and basically add one of our own from the Twinmotion library. So if we go to Electronic Appliances, you'll see all sorts of nice bits of kit here now. And these are the new libraries, actually, they've introduced in 2022.2. So I really love these new libraries. They're very high quality. Um, and you can see there's all sorts of things, you know, headphones and iPads, mice and cameras, that sort of thing. So what we'll do, we're just going to go ahead and rotate this headphone as if it was sort of leaning down on the table a bit more, just to make it look a bit more natural. That looks good. And just move it up ever so slightly. Just be careful that you don't click on the uh, yellow bit like I just did. It's actually very useful in that you can reset the object, but I did that by accident. As you can see, just need to re-rotate it now. Uh, but it's a good feature to, to know about if you do want to reset the object to its original rotation as well. Um, so let's drag on these cameras and we'll go and see if we can kind of find a nice laptop as well. I'm sure if we uh, have a look through the libraries we'll find something. Okay, so there's a nice little Apple Mac laptop. Let's drag that on, just rotate that round, just to give the scene a little bit of detail in this sort of foreground. So we're going to go through to um, a few other materials now, do a bit more work on some of the materials. Just going to drag a nice sort of dark, shiny wood onto that tabletop there. And when I render the path tracing, you will notice at the moment it's a bit dark. So this is something we'll need to sort out in a minute with the lighting. But you know what, let's just focus on the materials for a minute. So I'm just going to go ahead and rotate this material here. And let's sample the floor using the texture tool, so T for texture, and you'll notice that I can increase the um, scaling of that floor a little bit, 
and just rotate that around. Now these have come through actually pretty well. These were textures from Cinema 4D, um, which have actually come through well. So I can just enhance those in twin motion. Okay, so I think let's carry on with a few more materials. See what else we would like to use in our project. Let's just drag some nice oak onto there, slightly lighter oak. Um, so look, Twin Motion comes with a fantastic set of materials, as you know, but don't be afraid to actually make your own for certain projects as well. And this is something that over time, you know, you'll be able to build up in your user library. So you can see we're just navigating through. Um, I really feel like um, we just want to prop out this bookshelf a bit more and delete a couple of the items that were there already. So if we go through to home, uh, let's start off with a couple of these wonderful new musical instruments. Now do remember these are brand new in 2022.2, the preview version, and it just shows the level of quality of the new libraries that are coming with Twinmotion all the time. And I'm really pleased with the improvements here. And they add just a lovely bit of detail, but the most important thing is the libraries are improving all the time. And if you factor in the fact that we now have access built into Twinmotion with the Quicksaw libraries, you really do have a vast array of um, kind of props and assets at your fingertips. So let's just navigate around a little bit more and let's drag this uh, nice speaker somewhere a bit higher there into that zone there. You can see very easy to drag and drop them and then just rotate them around. I really like the widget that you get with uh, Twin Motion. Uh, it kind of does everything you need, scaling, moving and rotating as well. Uh, I think what we just need up here is some nice sort of photos, something to give that wall a bit of attention. And you know, the, start, the model's starting to come together. Look, given a bit more time, we could um, work out this in a lot more detail and add a lot more props onto that shelf. But let's just keep going and we'll add a few books onto the shelf. You can see how easy this is. I love the way it snaps accurately and then you can kind of just drag them into position very, very sort of smoothly in real time. Look, for me, Twin Motion is just such a wonderful program uh, to work so fluidly with the kind of high quality of rendering in real time. Now, the path tracing is a wonderful feature and we'll look at that in a bit, but you know, the ability just to work at this level of kind of visualization and, and sort of real time rendering um, is still amazing, you know, and it's, it sort of blows me away. And that's really where I love Twin Motion and I think you guys will find it amazing for interiors as well. It just allows you to decide on things like the lighting and the interior decor very rapidly. Okay, so you can see I've just clicked the path tracing button now and we're beginning to get a bit of a feel for what the uh, path tracing image looks like. Now my first observation was it's a bit dark actually, so what I'm going to do is drag in um, a light. So let's get a light just in that actual light itself. I'll just move that up a bit there. The light's coming quite bright, so I'm just going to adjust the intensity down um, to a bit lower and we'll try it with some shadows. So there's the path tracing with that light, already making a massive difference. Let's now move on to try the location and just see if we can tweak the sky dome, what contribution that makes to the image. Um, so sometimes the sky dome works quite well, particularly for exteriors, but obviously for interiors, maybe not quite as much um, impact. Although you will notice a little bit more kind of blue uh, on the walls there, and that's because the light is sort of coming from that sky dome. So it does look a bit more natural for sure. Okay, so we're gonna go back to lighting, and I think we need just a bit more light in the scenes, a bit dark, so let's drag in um, an omnidirectional light. Very good choice for sort of general illumination. Uh, let's try some shadows and let's click the path tracer. So you can see that path trace rendering on low settings actually looks really good, I think. And it's more than enough for us to preview the capabilities of the lighting. So as soon as I let go and click um, R or click the button for the path tracer, we'll be able to kind of just quickly render using the path tracer. Let's just drop the intensity of that light a little bit. So the lights often come in a bit over intense for my, for my liking and I just want to sort of drop those down. There's a nice little sort of spotlight washing that wall. So I think lighting already looks really, really good. Um, that was so simple to do. We just literally added a couple of point lights, um, omni lights, if you like, and um, a spotlight. So without sort of further ado, let's move on to uh, tweaking, maybe try the exposure. I'll just bring that up a tiny bit. Now you've got to be a bit careful. Sometimes um, if we rotate the sky dome, that can impact the lighting. 
Let's just see if that's going to improve it or not. And as I say, other times, you know, I actually just want to not match the sun so that I can actually manually control the sun position as well. So here we are in full screen mode. Um, I just really wanted to show you on low settings how this path tracer works. So, okay, it's not quite there, but it's pretty much real time. And as soon as you let go, within a second or so, it's rendered up. Um, so we're getting there. And, uh, you know, in the future, obviously, graphics cards will be even more powerful, even more capable. Now, my, my graphics card here is a 2080 Ti. It's an 11 gigabyte graphics card, and it is pretty good. Uh, it was a couple of years old now, but at the top of the range at the time. Obviously, these days, you've now got the 3090 and so on with 24 gigabytes. Um, so I think that would make a significant difference if you can find one and if you can afford one. Okay, so you can see I'm just playing around with the settings now on these images. Um, I'm going for a high quality here because I'm sort of nearing trying to get one of my final renders out. I just want to play with the vignetting and see if that's something I'm interested in. But the good thing with vignetting is you can always apply that in post editing afterwards. Uh, whereas if you do it in the original image, it's kind of fixed in there. So let's create a new image and let's just try it immediately uh, rotating around to a slightly different view here. Let's click onto more, we'll go to camera and let's drop down the field of view so that we're kind of really zoomed in on some of these objects on the table. Um, so you can see it's very nice again with this number one navigation speed, really slow when you're close in, really essential to kind of use that because uh, otherwise you can shoot off and lose your view. So that looks really, really cool. I'm pretty happy with that view. Let's just try the path tracer again, just to get a feel for what the final lighting will be. And we'll drop down the vignetting. So what we're gonna do is try the depth of field. And there's a really nice little aspect here where you can click onto the target mode. And you can see I've just clicked on the table, which means the depth of field has kicked in uh, so that I've got nice focus on that table and the objects on it. But the blur is kind of kicking in on the background a little bit as well. Now we can easily sort of change this with the uh, distance or things like the aperture down at the bottom. So we'll have a look at that in a second. But yeah, it's looking really nice. We're just letting that path trace render finish there. So let's just drop the distance there and try the aperture of two. Just watch the background there. It's a little bit less blurred now, as you can see. Let's try 1.5 just to get a nice compromise. So, this is how easy it is to basically create your images. And honestly, within a few minutes, this is all live recording. I have basically created three pretty nice interior renders of my um, 3D proposal. So let's just render those out and we'll come and review those in a second. Um, you can see the rendering is actually pretty fast as well. Okay, so while it's rendering, we can just pop into our Explorer and we can just review any images that are kind of completed already. Uh, so here's the first one. Now you can see this is rendered without the path tracing at this stage, um, but I'm gonna come back and turn the path tracing on and re-render all of these images for you uh, in a bit more time as well. So we'll review those later in the video. So let's go forward here and set up a little video clip. So again, very straightforward to do. Simply set at least two keyframes, and basically you can now play that video in real time. Now, the one thing that I've always loved with this kind of thing is the ability to change the sun direction and time. So I've turned off the um, sun in the sky dome, and I'm able to now adjust that sun position during the day. So let's get that little bit of sun peeping through the window there. That looks really nice with the path trace surrender and let's just click on to update. So we'll go to the next image, we'll go through, do the same thing. So just change that location. Now do remember, if the sky dome is enabled, as it is here, you're gonna to need to turn off the match sun, and that means then you can go back to location, and there we go, and just change that time of day. That's definitely something that caught me out a little bit ago uh, before. Okay, so that looks really nice with those sort of shadows coming through the window and that different time of day at the end of that video. So what's nice now is we can go back, we can do a little preview in real time and see those shadows coming through. And this will be uh, looking really nice when we come to do our animation in a moment. There we go, you see that lovely sunshine coming through at the end of the day. Okay, so um, let's just sort of carry on with a tiny bit more refinement here. 
and let's go back to do one more video. So we're going to go through to our first image, which I think was a really nice one. We'll just sort of frame that view up a tiny bit, just adjust it a little bit there to a different angle. There we go, just navigate through using our lovely new slow speed where everything looks super smooth. We'll go through to video and simply create our first frame. Now let's navigate through a little bit closer and when we're ready, we'll click the plus button to generate a keyframe. We can move up and down as well at the same time. Always do a little quick preview. Now do remember these are very simple videos with just two keyframes. There's no reason why I can't create much more complex ones as well. Um, but I actually quite like shorter videos with minimal uh, big turns because you get them nice and smooth. And it means that we can always edit them together using say, uh, you know, iMovie or and, uh, video editing software just to kind of bring it all together. Okay, so we're going through the final stages now. We're almost done on our final renders. What I really wanted to show you with this tutorial was how easy and how effortless it can be to create very high quality images and some animations in a very short space of time. Like we've only been going for about 15 minutes now on this tutorial and hopefully you'll agree that this sort of twin motion for interiors is absolutely amazing. Uh, there's a lot more we can do. We could do cloud presentations. We could do uh, panoramas as well. Let's go ahead. Let's render out these final images and these animations. And let's review all of this at the end. But I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial so far. And I really hope that if you're not subscribed to the channel, this is enough to make you click that like and subscribe button. As I say, I will be producing tons more videos soon. And if you haven't seen it already, please make sure you snap up a copy of my wonderful 322 page uh, Revolutionize Your Rendering ebook, which is available on my store. And I'm gonna put the link in the description for you. And I say it's a really nice book to help you learn to in motion. And there's lots of really nice inspiring case studies as well. Anyway, there we go, 15 minute tutorial. Thanks for watching. Now I just wanted to take this opportunity to highlight my book, Revolutionize Your Rendering with Twin Motion. This is a beautiful 320 page, fully illustrated PDF and ebook that's available for you to buy in uh, on the store. And it features some of the best featured artists from all over the world. So if you want to learn more about Twin Motion, take a look at the book and I really hope you enjoy reading it. And thanks for watching.